Phyllis Reynolds Naylor was born in Anderson, Indiana on January 4, 1933. She was born into a family with interest in the arts, mainly music and drama. Both her parents were educated at Anderson College. Her mother got her degree in religious education and her father was studying to be a minister. Phyllis was born during the Great Depression years, which was the longest, most widespread economic depression yet. It began in 1929 and lasted up until the late 1930s or early 1940s. The Great Depression affected people of all classes from rich to poor. It even affected Phyllis's father's priorities. His dream in becoming a minister came to a halt when the Great Depression began. Instead of going to school, he got a job as a grocer to make the little money he did to support his family, and then later he moved on to be a salesperson. Growing up during this time, her family didn't have much. What they did have were quite a few books, which mainly her mother and sometimes her father would read to them every night up until their teen years. Some of the books included two volumes of Grimm's fairy tales, the Bible story, because her family was a very religious family, the wind and the willows, and your favorite, the complete works of Mark Twain. Her writing career began early on as a child during her kindergarten years. Every afternoon, her teacher would ask for volunteers to make up a story. Naylor was always volunteering, leading the teacher to tell her that she had enough turns for the day and to give the other students a chance to create stories of their own. The first story Phyllis brought home to her mother she later realized it was not only bad, but it was plagiarized. It sounded a great deal like the Jupiter Tree by the Brothers Grimm, which is one of the stories that her mother read to her as a child. It read, Once upon a time, there was a little boy and a little girl who lived in the woods with their mother. One day, the little boy said, Mother, I want an apple. The mother said, Okay. The boy reached into the box, and the mother closed the lid on him and cut off his head and set him out in the yard and tied a rag around his neck to keep his head on. The little girl came home. She cried a lot. She sneaked out and pasted his head back on with magic paste. Then she put her brother in her boyfriend's house. She grew up and married her boyfriend. The mother died. The end. Phyllis jokes that her mother kept this story just in case she ever needed a psychiatrist. It wasn't until she entered fourth grade that she became more interested in writing her own books. Since times were hard, she had to search through the wastebasket for used paper to write her stories on. Her and her siblings were not allowed to use unused plain white paper. Phyllis would pick out the paper that wasn't too crumpled and write her stories and do her illustrations on the unused sites. Phyllis was very well known for her talent with writing at her school. She wrote several poems. One in particular was done in 20 minutes dedicated to her principal on his birthday. That's talent because not many people can pull that off. At this time, Phyllis would never have thought that writing was going to be her life's work. She only viewed writing as a hobby, as a child. Her story, Mike's Hero, which was based on baseball and her only sports story ever written, was the first to be published. She was 16 years old at the time and was paid $4.67 for it. Phyllis has always enjoyed making up stories as she was growing up. She went on to study at Joliet Junior College, where she received her diploma in 1953 for education. During this time, she married her first husband at the age of 18. And five years into the marriage, he started to fall ill. He began showing signs of a mental illness. Phyllis had to move him from place 
to place getting treatments at different hospitals. During this time, her only source of income came from her writing. At the time, she did what she had to do to support them both. So she put her pen to paper and began writing several different stories to pay her bills. She eventually had to hospitalize him in a sanitarium, which is when she finally realized he wasn't going to get better. Since she wasn't going to have a future with her husband, she filed for divorce, and once it was final, she went on to receive a bachelor's degree in clinical psychology. That was the end of that road though, because she decided at that time that she didn't want to continue into graduate school. Because of all the writing that she had done while supporting her and her husband, she finally realized that writing was her first love. In 1960, Phyllis became a full-time writer. She also remarried. She married a speech pathologist by the name of Dr. Rex Naylor. In 1965, she sold her first children's book called The Galloping Goat and Other Stories. Phyllis says the hardest part for her about being a writer is being able to focus on one story at a time. She says she's always coming up with new ideas for stories, new characters. So what she does is she writes them down in a three ring binder so that way she can go back to it later on once she's done with the current story she's working on. Needler keeps her ideas fresh by listening to people of all ages. In public places like shopping centers, or arcades or pharmacies etc etc where she can see all the different type of hairstyles that are in she also paid attention to teens talking to see what interests them she is best known for her 1992 Newbery award winner book Shiloh Naylor got the idea for Shiloh after coming across an abused female stray dog in the community of Shiloh in Tyler County, West Virginia. So in her book Shiloh, the setting of this story takes place in West Virginia, where Marty Preston, an 11-year-old boy, finds a stray dog wandering the hills near his house. He names his dog Shiloh. Judd Travers is Shiloh's real owner but he mistreats him and doesn't feed him. Marty takes Shiloh and protects him. Eventually, Travis finds out. He demands that Marty give Shiloh back. Marty witnesses Judd hunting out of season and uses that to try and blackmail Travers into giving him Shiloh. Marty goes to Judd Travers and tells him he doesn't have money, but that he'll work for him for a month for Shiloh. They came to the agreement and Marty works for him even towards the end of the month when he realizes that Judd is going back on his word. He tells him that their agreement isn't legal. In the end, Judd lets Shiloh be with Marty. Nayla writes in all sorts of genres. She has a picture books, fiction books. She has many short stories, juvenile nonfiction books for adults in fiction and non-fiction, her Alice series, which began in 1985 to 2004, her Witch series, which contains six books, her Bernie Magruder series, which contains eight books, her York trilogy, and of course, as I mentioned, the Shadow series, which contains four books. Some fun facts of Naylor are her favorite books are of course as I mentioned the Mark Twain but overall she likes all kinds scary funny and serious her favorite foods are pizza and chocolate on her spare time she likes to play the piano and she enjoys snorkeling and swimming 